All right, and welcome back to Bayou Time. And I must say, over my many years of being on TV, maybe a handful of citizenship stories that I've done over the years. But we have a great one today. After 65 years, Miss Marcella Conus, who's with us today, has become a citizen of the United States. A fantastic story. Her son-in-law, James Chancy, called me up last week and told me about this, and I said, absolutely, we want to get her on. So here we are. And Miss Marcella, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good to see you for sure. I want to hold this up because we're going to go back all the way back to the John Gordon days of the Terrebonne Press. And Miss Marcella, you are in that picture. Can you bring us back and tell us what was going on when this article was done? Well, we, like I said, we came in 1959, <laughs> and um, we rode the train down to Louisiana. We flew in from uh, Greece, right? Uh, and we were um, sponsored by my mother's uh, cousin. Uh, she and her husband ran the island restaurant, which was the first floor of the Pettigrew Hotel. And so they were our um, sponsors. Um, it, the process took a little over 18 months, the mm -hmm. preparation to come to the States. The Pettigrew Hotel, you're really bringing back some memories Oh, now. yeah. I, I, you know, I, I was very young, but I remember, the, I remember those days very clear. Uh, we, we were very nervous. We yeah. didn't speak in English, but we did speak French. Now, I'm not as fluent as I was then because I haven't used it, but I can read it. Right. If, you, if you know Latin and, and Greek, <clears throat> you can read a, a lot of other languages. So, so. I, I'd imagine it was a little bit nerve-wracking to be coming to a foreign country, mm -hmm. which... The United States was to you and your family, and when you got here, what what was it like? The fortunate thing is that the size of town that home I was at the time, and uh, the people uh, is Bon Terre is a good name for the place, and what makes it a Bon Terre is a population. They were they really took us in. Uh, they uh, we, we, with speaking French, it wasn't the identical uh, Cajun French, but it, it was close enough. I didn't have right. to draw pictures for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I had teachers that really went the extra mile to to help, yeah. you know, to help me. Um, and my father had a job waiting for him actually because. Um, he worked for A.C. Sharon, and the manager there was a friend of um, my relatives. And uh, at that time, you know, they say time is almost everything. Mm -hmm. So when we came across that the company was changing to the met metric system, he was a machinist. Okay. So, so he knew. That's what he knew. And he was a very hard worker. Uh, he was self-employed back in the old country, and there was so much turbulence uh, with, uh, at that time, right after World War II. Um, so there were a lot of people moving from that area uh, looking for a better future. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like I said, it took about 18 months to prepare uh, our papers. Uh, you have to approve that you can hold your weight, you know, that you can contribute. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, it's not easy, but you just commit to it. And so uh, he worked for AC Sharon all, all the time that, you know, he held employment. Mm -hmm. And um, we lived uh, on Crescent Boulevard. Right. And then... 
we eventually, you know, got our, our own place. But um, I, I'm really grateful to the people here who really, really were very um, congenial, with, you know, with, with us. So yeah. it helped. I want to show the picture again because I want you to describe before we go to the first break. Mm -hmm. Who's everybody in this picture? You you came down as a Rokas, is that how, right. did I say that Rokas. correctly? Yes. Okay, let me tilt it so we get the glare out. There we go, right there. And so this is a very nostalgic mm -hmm. picture. Now, Rokas is R-O-K-K-O-S? Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you don't roll your tongue in the R, you just say Rokas? Exactly. Um, <clears throat> Europeans speak in the front of the mouth okay you know, right. so it's not it's not back here yeah it's in the front so it's uh they don't roll the r's okay and and they do pronounce uh, a lot of the consonants very in the front you know yeah to where it has a different sound going into the break i was asking mrs marcella why she waited 65 years to become a citizen of the United States. And during the break, she gave me the answer. So now I'm gonna let her give you the answer. And it's really a great answer. So, so let's tell the public what happened. Well, it, it is a, a slow process each time. Uh, this was the third time I, I applied and I had a close friend that uh, helped me through um, the process. Um, internet help this time where you can download uh, with the COVID, you know, it, it prolonged uh, the period of processing. So um, it, after, see, 2019 is when I applied, I got a response at the beginning of June of this year. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a busy place. <laughs> and it takes a, a good bit of time that they go through your records. Um, I should be very simple. I mean, I lived here most of my life with yeah. the exception of maybe eight years mm -hmm. uh, that I lived in New Orleans. My husband is from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, we had a business here um, mm -hmm. up until 2001 is mm -hmm. when we sold the business on um, engine rebuilding business, right. Conus Engine Machining. Um, and of course we, we raised the family, uh, you know, life happens and you, you can't really, um, stay with, with as a process as long as this. I mean, we don't, we, we hear results, but we don't know, um, the fact that it's quite often that, that people have to wait this long when they go through the right process and i never put two and two together but now your husband was from the ninth ward oh. which he which he told me he's from the ninth <laughs> ward so yeah. but I, I didn't realize till he walked in uh, huh? those beautiful cars that he yes. used to work on and everything so i put two and two together but how inspirational was he in trying to help you get citizenship well you ha you have to want it to begin with and earn it, right. you know? So uh, he did encourage me mm -hmm. um, and and it's my family did. Um, you, it's a little, you get apprehensive. I mean, it's yeah. intimidating, you know, yeah. they're asking. But ultimately it's you, you have to want it. Right, yeah. correct. So, um, you know, I, I am very thankful, you know, to uh, achieve it. And I, I have wonderful friends that um, uh, came to celebrate uh, getting to my citizenship. And I think that's the extended family. I mean, we left a lot of family behind. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I feel very fortunate to, um, to be here. Uh, I do miss the old country. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is home. 
I was going to ask you that. I'm going to get to the people that you left behind, but mm -hmm. when you were, I don't know what they call it, taking an oath, or I'm, I'm not sure what, I guess it would be an oath, oath of allegiance to the United States. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? Very moving. And um, um, it, it's, it's an honor. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have to listen to it right. and um, respect the flag mm -hmm. um, and appreciate what this country offers. And, and I could hear... It shouldn't be taken for granted. Yeah, I could hear the emotion in your voice when you're talking about it. What, in your own words, what did this country offer you? It offered me a chance to... Um, have a, a better and safer life. I mean, we mm -hmm. have problems here, but um, there's no perfect place. Mm -hmm. so, and so uh, we have to constantly work at it right. to keep it safe. And, and I'm sure you've been a, a great example. I mean, and a, just for full transparency, mm -hmm. James lives right down the street. From yeah, that, so, so that's I, a challenge. Yeah, I passed James's <laughs> house, and his his yard is meticulous. His yeah. grass is perfect. He's always working in his yard. When he called me, mm -hmm. you know, I don't get many calls where people say, "Look, can you cover a story? My mother-in-law just got citizenship after sixty-five years. That, yeah. That's unusual. Well, it's an unusual story, but it's a good story. Yeah. Um, you know, we have we we tease one another all the time. Uh, he hears, uh, say, if we're watching a uh, program that has to do with medicine or, or even uh, space or whatever, and they, there's always uh, uh, words that come from the, the Greek language, mm -hmm. and I tell him, you know, this came from the Greek. I sound like my big fat Greek wedding, <laughs> you know. Uh, this came from the Greek language, and it's so... And he goes, you know, you Greeks, y'all want to own everything. I said, well, we certainly have been here a very long time. You were coming to the land of opportunity mm -hmm. here in the United States. What, and I've always just wondered, you know, if, if I was born in another country, I would think they had opportunities. Was it just not the same as when you came here? It was so difficult then, be, like I said, because they were... There was so much uh, to rebuild after World War II, and uh, you know some countries were having a harder time than others. So uh, you know Greece is a small country, and uh, my father was having a hard time. Mm -hmm. And so when our um, my aunt you know wrote to um, to my parents and said. I think they're opening your area to bring people over. If why don't you apply? And so we did. And um, as I said, you know, uh, earlier, it, it took us about eighteen months to uh, complete the process. We, I wondered during the flight if we were going to make it because. We did have a problem with one of the uh, engines. Wow. And we, we were approaching the French Alps, and the pilot turned back, and we landed in Rome, Italy. And we were there for three or four days. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember that flight. <laughs> it was did. all at night. Mm -hmm. When we finally got to New York, um, three days later, and then of course we took a train down to uh, New Orleans, and we were greeted by my aunt and my uncle. So it was it was your mom, your dad, you and your sister. Correct. Okay? And yeah. your sister doing well today? Very well. She worked for a bank for several years. She's retired now. <laughs> Where did she establish herself? Was, was it she, Homa? Yes. Okay. She's uh, off 311. 
Okay. And um, she, um, I, I was trying to get her to come, but I guess she's. <laughs> well, look, I heard you were nervous shy. too, but you're doing very well. Can I say Thank that? You. Thank you're you. doing very well. I told you I don't bite. No. So it, this is an easy interview. You're doing very well. But now, now that you look back, you know, and all these years have passed, mm -hmm. I could see the conviction in you that the process was worth it. Absolutely. Um, you know, when I was so young um, and I would uh, see um, the American films, uh, of course I couldn't understand it, but they had the interpretation in French and... and uh, Italian, and I would read, you know, as, as much as I could mm -hmm. uh, to to understand what the, um, the the story was about. But I used to pretend that I could speak English, and I haven't stopped since. <laughs> <laughs> People tell me I speak, I talk too much. I find but I you, love I find your English just fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Did it take a lot of practice? Well, you know, I, 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 loved, I loved school. I did r real well back in the old country. And when I came here, like I said, we, I had wonderful teachers, and I was determined not to get left behind. Where would you go to school? Homer Central, okay. Terrebonne High School. Uh, I, we still keep in touch with a lot of the classmates. They're so wonderful. They really are. Yeah, so you... You got a diversified education. Oh, it's from your early early years. It. You got a in another well, country and then United States growing up. You you condition to these different uh, sounds, and so uh, for me, and I'm sure others, uh, languages are not hard to learn. Uh, you know, they're all around you mm -hmm. back then. So um, again, you know, here. Uh, why it was an easy adjustment is because we felt that the people here are just as um, dedicated and proud of their culture. Mm -hmm. um, they love to cook, and the Greeks do too. We have a, a, a festival every year mm -hmm. in New Orleans, except of the year of the, with the COVID. And so there was a lot of... Um, personality traits that we could uh, identify with and uh, the size town that home I had at the time was was just right well the timing was right yeah, what a great story once again I'm gonna hold this up uh, this was a long time ago not too long I don't want to make anybody mad at me <laughs> and uh, 65 years later Miss Marcella is a proud citizen of the United States of America. I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank your husband who's sitting patiently oh. in the audience waiting for you for, for coming with you. I remember some stories I did with him way back. And mm -hmm. congratulations. Thank, thank you so you, much sir. for coming on. And I'm it's glad you came by. Thank you. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, anytime. Thank you. And good to see you. And hold that flag and wave it. Absolutely. Tall and high. Absolutely. All right. There you have it. We're going to take a short break here on Bayou Time. A lot more. That was a great story. We'll see you right around the corner.